Welcome to GST 101, Introduction to Geospatial Technology. This is Lecture Zero, where we'll introduce you to the concepts of FOSS and FOSS4G. So what is open source software? The term refers to how the software is licensed. Open source software is licensed so that everyone can use, copy, study, and change the software in any way. And the source code is available. Users are encouraged to voluntarily improve the design and functionality of the software. With proprietary software, the term also refers to how the software is licensed. Proprietary software is licensed so that the source code is not available and use will be restricted in some way, perhaps limiting the number of computers it can be installed on, the period the software can be used, the amount of data that can be processed, the number of features available in the software, or even limiting the fields of endeavor such as an educational license or a non-commercial license. And there are some related terms, open source software, free software, and FOSS. So what does all this mean? Well, starting with free software, the free software movement was conceived in 1983 by Richard Stallman, shown here, to give the benefit of software freedom to computer users. Stallman founded the Free Software Foundation in 1985 to provide the organizational structure to advance his free software ideas. And along the way, he came up with the concept of copyleft, which says that anyone who redistributes the software with or without changes, must pass along the freedom to further copy and change it. Copy left essentially guarantees that every user has freedom. So the term free in free software is intended to refer to the freedom to copy and reuse the software rather than the financial cost. And the free software license grants the user four kinds of freedoms. One, the freedom to run the program for any purpose. Two, the freedom to study how the program works and adapt it to your needs the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor, and the freedom to improve the program and release your improvements to the public so the whole community benefits. And obviously, freedom number two requires access to the source code as well. Open source software was coined by Eric Raymond in 1998, who thought the term free would be misunderstood. The source code and certain other rights normally reserved for copyright holders are provided under a software license that meets the open source definition or that is in the public domain. So this license permits users to change, use, and improve the software and to redistribute it in a modified or in unmodified forms. So very similar to the free software license in many ways. So open source software and free software are different terms for software which comes with certain rights or freedoms for the user. They describe two approaches and philosophies towards free software. People will often say that the open source license is a practical development methodology, whereas the free software license is a social movement. In the end, most open source software is free, and most free software is open source. Which brings us to the term FOSS, free and open source software. Many are now just using this term. Although the term open source is much more prevalent in popular culture than FOSS, but software users are beginning to use FOSS more frequently. There are some other related terms you've likely heard, such as freeware, which is software available at no monetary cost. It's considered neither free nor open source. Free, in this case, just refers to the monetary cost of the software. Source available, shared source. Here, the source is available for viewing, the source code that is, but it may not be legally modified or redistributed. So you can see how the program works, but you're not allowed to modify it. And this type of licensing has been used by Microsoft, for example. And finally, closed source, which is most proprietary software. So a given piece of FOSS software is essentially considered a software project, and these projects are established to solve some kind of problem. Developers then program the software. And this development isn't purely altruistic. Developers have to earn a living too. So they can do this by selling services provided with the software, which is often the case, being paid by a third party to develop the software, being paid by crowdfunding, training others in the use of the software, or even selling repackaged software with support agreements. FOSS projects themselves have a governance structure Sometimes a small project will be led by one individual, which would be a centralized model. More often than not, they're led by a steering committee, which is essentially a democracy. And the steering committee may include individuals who could be developers or end users, companies or organizations. 
So although one of the most direct ways you can contribute to an open source project is to be a core developer, there are many other ways to contribute to a FOSS project, such as testing features and reporting bugs, writing user manuals, and creating training materials. So FOSS versus proprietary. Is one better than the other? And obviously the answer here is no. FOSS software must be evaluated in the same ways as proprietary software. The most important question is, will it meet my needs? To most of us, the availability of source code isn't the most important factor. However, the freedom to use the software is often very attractive, and the lack of licensing fees may also be important. So here's a chart that shows some examples of FOSS versus proprietary software, starting with operating systems, where on the proprietary side you have Windows and Mac, and on the FOSS side Linux. With mobile operating system, you have the Apple operating system and Windows Mobile on the proprietary side, and Android on the FOSS side. Office software, this Microsoft Office on the FOSS side, OpenOffice, etc. And these days there are FOSS alternatives to almost every type of proprietary software out there. So software for image manipulation, vector drawing, web browsers, web servers, databases, etc. So let's look at this same chart but focused on geospatial software. So starting with geospatial desktop software, on the proprietary side ArcGIS is the leading software vendor. In this course we're going to be focused on QGIS which is the leading open source desktop software and we'll also use a little bit of Grass GIS in this. And then there are open source alternatives for doing field GIS data collection, remote sensing, web mapping, and spatial databases. And we'll touch on some of these spatial databases in this course as well. Let's talk about FOSS4G. This is an acronym that stands for free and open source software for geospatial. So why use open source for GIS? Well first of all it's free to try and GIS is essentially a tool so why not have a full toolbox? You can certainly increase your marketability by learning a new skill set, eliminate licensing fees, and QGIS will run on multiple operating systems, which is attractive. For example, it will run on Apple. Next, I want to cover the Open Source Geospatial Foundation, also known as OSGEO. This is a nonprofit formed in 2006, and the goal is to support and build the best open source geospatial tools. It provides financial, organizational, and legal support to the broader free and open source geospatial community. It also serves as an independent legal entity to which community members can contribute code, funding, and other resources, and it maintains these contributions for the public benefit. So we're going to talk now about QGIS, which is an OSGEO project, meaning that it has been incubated underneath the OSGEO umbrella. And to be included as an OSGEO project, a FOSS4G project has to meet certain requirements in terms of its documentation, the website, and interoperability with other softwares. So QGIS is a viewer for common geospatial formats, it's an editor for geospatial data, and it has many analysis capabilities too. It's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even Android, although the Android installer is in alpha right now and is not easily installed, but it will ev eventually be available for Android most likely with an easy installer available in the Play Store. It has an easy intuitive interface. It has an active development community, very rapid development. At the moment, a version is coming out every four months with a long-term release happening once a year. There are many user-created tools and an active email listserv, which was one of the best ways to get support. So in terms of help resources, with proprietary software, there's often a dedicated support phone number to call. And there's a common misconception that FOSS software has poor support. There's actually very good support. However, with FOSS software, support comes from the community. So among the help resources for QGIS, there's a very thorough user guide. There are case studies, Planet QGIS, which is the blog for QGIS an email listserv. This is one of the best ways to get support where you can write an email to the listserv describing your problem and usually get an answer within hours. You can also read the email listserv every day to see the kind of issues people are having. There's commercial support so there are organizations who will you can pay to provide support for QGIS and training. There are conferences and user groups. There are books, blogs, and social media. So there's a lot of different resources out there to get help. Here's a screenshot of the QGIS user guide. It's very thorough and this is a great place to, um, to check in if there's um, a piece of functionality you're not sure how to use. 
there are case studies. So there are case studies going back several years. So you can see how different organizations and agencies have used QGIS to solve different geospatial problems. And then there's Planet QGIS, which is the main QGIS blog. And it also includes a blog roll of other QGIS related blogs, um, such as Anita Grazer's Funalia, Linfinity. So there's many um, great blogs out there that focus on QGIS. Now that you've been introduced to FOSS and FOSS4G and QGIS, you can work through Lab Zero, which will take you through an exercise of visiting many of the resources on the web for FOSS4G.